Good afternoon and welcome into Mary's Kitchen. Thanks for joining me today. It happens to be veganary and I thought that I would make a lovely uh, plant-based stew. Uh, I love a stew, especially if it's uh, topped with a few dumplings on top. So I'll just wait for a few of you to get on here. Okay, you're starting to pop on, that's great. Nice to see you. Hi there, Kathleen, how are you? Yeah, so uh, the month of January here in the UK is uh, we celebrate uh, veganary. I don't know uh, if uh, how many of you are vegans or vegetarians, but in the UK alone, we have in excess of a million vegans, uh, which is great. And to be honest with you, I haven't. Uh, I probably don't lean either to vegan or veg vegetarianism, but. I uh, do like to take it on board once in a while. I think it's good for your system. Hey, Marsha and Paula. How are you, Paula? Good to see you and Darcy and Trish. Um, so anyway, I'll just get my pot warmed up here because uh, I've got... Basically, what happens at this time of year, if you look into your larder, your fridge or whatever, you're going to see a whole bunch of sort of vegetables there screaming to be used. And I thought this is a perfect time to make a vegetarian, a vegan type uh, plant-based stew. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I just looked around. What did I have? I had some parsnips. I had some carrots, onions. I had a little tiny turnip. I had uh, one leek. I had some Brussels sprouts. I had some old potato. Everything was crying out to be used. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to get on here and I'm going to make a lovely, uh, what's happening here? There, sorry, there was just something in my way there. Hi, Pamela and Brenda. Glenda, good morning. Lucas, how are you? And uh, William, oh, Barry, Barry Hurst. Hi, how are you, Barry? Deborah? Yes, I love vegetables too, and that's why I thought I would make this. I mean, I really, really do love vegetables. I'm sort of taking a leaning not to eating so much. I uh, certainly don't eat very much red meat. I think the only thing that I've had in the meat variety this week has been chicken. A little bit of chicken so I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in my pot first to start off um, and I'm gonna put a little diced onion in there initially and I'm gonna put my leek with that and I think I'll put my carrots in there as well <laughs> I'll probably end up gonna put the whole pile of vegetables in there but um, I've got some onions here. Now my onions, I don't like, I love, <laughs> when I make stew, I like, I'm gonna put my parsnips in there too. That's a couple of parsnips, nothing's measured. Okay, this is basically vegetables going, use me, use me. And uh, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I don't like waste. And I think, of, I just feel like a whole lot of vegetables today. And this is a nice way to use them up. And I hope Pamela Broadhead's on here watching, because Pamela, she's a vegetarian. Hi, Karen. How are you down there, down under? Are you all right? Um, my onions, basically, I've got, I've chopped one onion in there already. Uh, let me just get my spoon. My burnt hole spoon. Where's my burnt hole spoon gone? I like my burnt hole spoon. Well used, right? And I'm just going to turn those a little bit. Mmm, starting to get some nice smells already. Let's turn this. I got a new oven on Friday. Brand new oven on Friday. Stove oven, the whole thing. That's a little garlic I'm going to put in there. Yeah, because my, my oven's not working. And I'm used, I used that little tiny one. And actually, it works wonders. I actually like the way it cooked a lot. So oh, it was brilliant, and it got me through the last four or five days. This really smells divine. Just keep stirring that a little bit. So this is purely, purely, totally uh, vegetables. That's why I call it my plant-based stew. And I'm going to make some lovely uh, dumplings for the top, and the dumplings are made with vegetable suet, so they're veg uh, good uh, vegetarian friendly as well. Now my onion, what I've done is I've peeled the skin off my onion, but you'll see that I've kept the little bottom there. 
okay? And I want to keep that there because I want a big chunk of onion. When I make my stew, I like big chunks of onion. So I'm going to go through that little thing there, and I'm going to cut this into three pieces. And I'm just going to take the tip off. And I'm going to cut this one into three pieces. Now you see that it's holding together beautifully because it's sealed at the end. And that's exactly how I'm going to put it into. I love getting a big surprise in my stew. So I'm just going to pop them in there too. Mmm, smells good already. Uh, I've got another one here, so I'm going to put two onions in. Just chop it through its tail. And I'm going to cut that into three big bits. I tend to do this with, um, <laughs> I'll show you something else that I do here with my uh, little turnip. I got, had a little mini turnip here, so I thought, oh, I'll use that as well. And I'm just going to leave those little bits on there because I want my onion to hold together in my stew. I can't wait. I was kind of tempted. Oops, I lost a bit there. Oh well, I don't know where that went. Oh well. I was kind of tempted to put some meat in this today, but then I thought, no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to make it really nice, a really nice plant-based stew. So that's what we're having. Hi, Janice. How are you? Oh, you're starting your 7 a.m. walk? I've already done my walk this morning. Hi, Rita and Kathy. Oh, Glenda, these are my favorite wooden spoons. No, there's nothing wrong with these. These are what you call seasoned wooden spoons. These spoons have done a lot of work. That's why I like them. What I'm going to do... Uh, is put a little balsamic vinegar in there, in the bottom, just a little bit. Probably about two tablespoons. Mm. Now, just to give it a little sharpness in the taste. And I'm going to be putting vegetable stock in here as well. All right, who's on? Hey, Rose, how are you? And Sharon, I try to catch everybody as you come on. Yes, Pam, a vegetable soup does sound super, especially when it's going to be topped with some beautiful dumplings as well. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to put my potatoes in. So these are all things that I had laying around in the kitchen. Uh, some of them, my potatoes have, you know, when they get the little gross on them because they've been hanging around too long. So that I'm just using everything up that's been hanging around in my kitchen. This pot's going to be very full by the time I'm done. Now I've got a little turnip here. I chopped some of it up. But then again, like my onions, I like a little surprise in my stew. And I like to get a nice little bit like that. So I'm going to put those in. Good. I've also got some, a little bit of lentil here, about, I'd say about a half a cup of lentils. I'm going to put them in, and that'll just be, act as a kind of a thickener, because when they break down. Oh, you don't, oh, I'll tell you what, um, Glenda, I put uh, a white wine vinegar in my rustic lentil soup, just about before I'm going to serve it, about, I'd say, about a quarter of a cup. I love it in my lentil soup. It just sharpens it all up. I really, really like it. I'm going to put, I had a couple of old tomatoes that were just absolutely desperately needing to be used. So they're going in there. Those were not my favorite tomatoes. They weren't vine tomatoes, which I like. Uh, I'm going to put my Brussels sprouts. I had some Brussels sprouts left. They're going in there. I don't think I can get much more in here. <laughs> I didn't even measure this. It just so happens. And I'm going to put my half a cup of lentils in there. And that'll thicken that up just beautifully. Once it starts cooking. I've got a chili. A lonely chili. I'm going to use that as well. And I am going to just take the top part of the seeds out. I'll just take that little part of the seeds. Not that that worries me. I do like it. 
And I'm just going to cut this chili up and put that all in there. Yeah, just give it a little heat. Not too much. Not too much heat. Now look how simple that is. This is like one pot cooking. I am going to put a few caraway seeds. I do like caraway. And I want to put a few caraway seeds in there. Um, I've got some black pepper corns. I'm going to put a, about a dozen black pepper corns in there. Now I'm using a vegetable broth, and I'll just be perfectly straight with you. I'm using vegetable nor cubes, which are gluten free and vegetarian friendly and vegan friendly as well. It's right there on the label. Vegan and gluten-free, which are terrific, because I do, these make your life a lot easier. Um, I'll just pour that stock in there. I might need more stock, but that's okay. We can start off with a liter. It's a liter of vegetable stock, and that's pretty good. And I'm not going to put any salt, because the um, stock cubes have salt in. See how simple that was? I mean, what, we've been here for like, less than five minutes and already I've got a pot of stew here going. So basically that's what I'm putting in. You could put some mixed herbs in here if you would like, but this is going to be nice. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my dumplings. And my dump The dumplings are quite easy. Who's on? Diane? Rajendra, hi. And Louise, Joy, Caraway seeds, Glenda. I'm just putting a few caraway seeds in. Put some mixed herbs in if you prefer. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you. This is uh, the piece de resistance, okay? This is my bouquet garni. I'm going to put that in as soon as that... Uh, yeah, I'll put it in a, in a second. I've got two bay leaves from my garden. I've got some fresh rosemary and I've got some fresh thyme. And I tie it with a little uh, thread, as you can see. There's a little thread there because you want to be able to pull it out afterwards. All right, I've got it on a little thread. Now this is excellent for soups and stews. If you've got some fresh herbs, don't hesitate tying them up like this and putting them in. The French like to cook like that. Bouquet garni, it's called, and they just tie all their kind of, it's kind of like the woody herbs, like your bay leaf and your, your, um, your rosemary and your thyme. And just tie them all up. This is absolutely fantastic. I don't know if any of you, I'm gonna start making soups uh, next week from the I Love Soup book, and I don't know if you all have a copy of this yet, but that's where all our recipes are going to be coming from in the next few weeks. And one of the probably first ones I'm going to make is French onion soup. And in French onion soup, you always put a beautiful bouquet garni in there, um, and it flavors all the stock. And I'm going to put that in here as well. And just sit that and make sure that it's under. I'm going to put a little bit more water in there. Um, just to bring it up to the top. Now, I've got four ounces of self-raising flour. Uh, now, what do you call self-raising flour? You have an all-purpose flour? Yes, all-purpose flour. That's it. And uh, I've got some Atora. I'll show you what this is, actually. Atora, but it's vegetarian. It's vegetable. suet type, a vegetable shredded suet, okay? It's vegetable fat, shredded. So we're keeping to the vegan theme. And I have looked up a Torah and it says also vegan friendly, not just vegetarian friendly, vegan friendly as well. Uh, two ounces of a Torah, which is a vegetable suet. Put that in there. And just mix that through your through your um, flour. I want a little bit of sea salt. I'm going to put a bit of pepper in there too. Um, you could also put, which I'm going to put in, some fresh parsley. Because this fresh parsley is all going into my stew. But I don't like to put it in right away. I'll put a little bit in now. And then I put the rest in just before I'm going to serve it. So I am going to put a little bit of parsley in to here as well, into my dumplings. 
just to give them a little bit of color. Should have my better knife here. I've got my lovely Pampered Chef heavy weighted knife. I love it when you're cut, cutting things like this. I'm just going to put that in there. So this is for the dumplings and the dumplings are going to go on top once your stew is done. So that's going to be in about an hour and a half's time. I'm just going to let it cook away. It's sort of just after three now. So a couple of hours, I'll probably look at it. And then when I'm just about ready to eat, then I will put my little dumplings, place them on the top of the, right on top of the stew, put the lid on, and then they're going to cook inside the stew. They're going to come up all beautiful and full. So I just have a little bit of water here. Just put it in until you can make a little paste. And you just keep mixing it. See, just keep mixing it in there. I love little dumplings with my stew. Or I would could make Yorkshire pudding too. <laughs> to have with my stew. That's always nice too. So what you're going to need is a little flour on your hands to roll these once we get them all mixed in. There we go. It doesn't take a second. Maybe a touch more water. Just cold water. Okay. I just keep it in the in a little thing beside me so I know how much I'm going to don't know how much I'm going to need so I just keep it there. I think that's just about right. Yeah, it's not sticky at all. That's good. 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 So I'm going to get probably about six dumplings here. You could also, but it's not, unless it was vegan cheese, you could also mix some cheese into these too if you wanted. I think maybe it's just going to make about... I don't want to make them too big. That's perfect. I thought I was going to need some flour on my hands, but I don't. So I don't want to make them too big. So about like that. All right. Basically just little six little balls or four little balls, whatever I can get out of here. <laughs> hey, Shawnee, how are you? And Sherry. Hey, Natalie. How's it going? And Petra, how are you, Petra? Making a plant-based... Uh, for veganary, for January, we have veganary January uh, here in the UK. So I'm making a plant-based stew using all my vegetables that were crying out to be used in my larder. And uh, I thought I'd just top it off with some beautiful little dumplings. So that's like four ounces of flour and four ounces of vegetable, uh, sorry, vegetable uh, suet. All right, which is a nice alternative because you can buy beef suet, but the vegetables suet. Can you buy a tour over in the States? I don't know. I'm sure there's something there that's similar that you can buy, but let me know if you wouldn't mind. Karen, I haven't seen you for ages. How are you? Karen Moranti, where are you in the world at the moment? Goodness, it's good to see you. Hey Sue, how are you from California? Oh, terrific. Uh, let's see. I got four so far, and I want to have six. It doesn't matter if they're all the same size, what have you. All right, now basically I'm just going to leave these sitting here. I'll just get the rest of the this last one out. Yeah, that made six. So that was four ounces of self-raising flour, all-purpose flour, and two ounces of uh, vegetable suet and just a little cold water. You can put your some parsley in. Just let me wash my hands. You can put some parsley in there. Uh, you could also not, uh, it would have to be vegan uh, approved cheese. Um, I'm sure there is one. Uh, I've never eaten really eaten vegan style food, but I'm quite interested in it. Uh, and I think it makes you feel a lot better. Makes your gut feel a lot better. So that's my little dumplings. And what I'll do is when my stew is ready and all my vegetables are cooked here. See, it's all starting to boil. I almost don't need any more liquid. So that was one liter of liquid for my big stew pot. Come over here and have a look if you like. 
bring you over and have a look. I don't have one of these cameramen that follows me around and zooms in on your food. So there you go. How's that? I'm going to turn that down now. Just bring it up to a boil and then turn it down. And I'm going to let it simmer for, oop, what happened? I lost you. There. There, you're back. <laughs> Sorry, I turned you around. <laughs> um, I'm going to let that simmer with the lid on for probably about an hour and a half just to get all the vegetables, lovely flavor, get the lentils all mixed in and, and nice and thickened up. It'll thicken up the gravy beautifully. And uh, then I'm going to put the dumplings on top and I'll photograph it afterwards with the dumplings on top as they're cooking so you can see what they look like because they puff up quite a bit. Hi, Sue. Yes, Sue. Well, it's not really a recipe. All it is is really all my vegetables that needed using up after Christmas and New Year and really throwing them in a pot with some vegetable stock and just some imagination. Like I put in there, I put some uh, potatoes, I put some carrots, I put some turnip, I put some leek, I put some big onions. Uh, yes, I can post the recipe. I put some chili, I put some garlic. Um, this, this is uh, uh, fairly simple. It's uh, two to one ratio. So if you're making six dumplings, it's four ounces of self-raising flour, and two ounces of uh, atura vegetable suet. This uh, parsley I'm going to put in later on. I'm going to cut this all up in a little bit and I'm going to put some of it in now and I'm going to put the rest in later. I put a few caraway seeds in, put some mixed herbs. Just use your imagination if you've got some celery still sit hanging around or just anything that needs using up. You could even put a tin of chickpeas in there if you wanted. So it's really really quite a versa 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 Versatile dish. Sorry, I got tongue-tied there. Hey, Chris. No, Chris. Uh, Sousa, no. This is a purely uh, Mary's Kitchen made-up recipe on the spot. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be very delicious. Let's just let, taste the... You can sort of get it. Oh, my onions. I love my big onions in there. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, that's awfully good. Uh, I uh, took one diced onion and started uh, sautéing that. And I put a little balsamic vinegar on top of it, about two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar with some olive oil in there as well. So just something, just to add a little zing to it. So hopefully that'll turn out well. Hi, Julie. Good morning. And Kathy, thank you so much, Kathy. I love you. <laughs> Um, if you can get Evie that cutting board at some, I don't know how you organized to meet each other last time, but whatever, thank you so much for doing that for me. Really, really appreciate it. I love those little cutting boards. You can see them on um, my website, maryjoancalder.com. Uh, one of my friends has just got one for herself for her kitchen, so I'm waiting until she starts using it. <laughs> oh, there you go, Evie. Thank you. I'm just saying, I don't know how you're going to meet up with Kathy there, but hopefully you'll get something organized uh, because she's got your uh, cutting board for you. So that's great. Hi, Peter. <laughs> Mary doll, that's cute. Thank you. Yes, I know. That's great. If you and Kathy can meet. Evie, what was that restaurant you and I went to? The Left Bank Bistro. Oh, my goodness. That was great. The greatest Bloody Marys in town, right? Oh, my goodness. Can't wait till we can do that again. Roll on vaccination. We're locked down here again for goodness knows how long. So you're probably going to see me quite a bit on here cooking. Um, at least uh, it helps keep me sane. That's the most important thing. And I thought uh, next week we'll probably start uh, a couple of challenges over on boot camp. Evie, I think the first one's going to be the French onion soup. And I don't know if you saw... Uh, if you came on late or you just came on, but I'm going to uh, just show the girls how to make a bouquet garni from some bay leaves and some rosemary and some thyme or whatever herbs you have in the garden and just tie them all up in a little bundle and put them into your stew. So this is going to be really, really tasty. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. It's up a bit too. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to let that cook away 
at its own speed and hopefully we're going to get something really really delicious once it's finished but if you do need the recipe i'll kind of throw something together for you there there's not really a recipe robin Oh, yeah, soups are great. Well, Robin, I've just put this book together. It's 50 soups, and uh, it's $7.99. It's a digital book, or £5.99. So if you're interested, just uh, give me your email address or uh, direct message me your email, and I can get this sent to you right away. And you can just pay for it at your convenience. Not a problem. Anyway, girls, I hope you have a wonderful day. It's so nice to be on here and sharing with you because uh, it's pretty bleak <laughs> over here. I don't know how to say to you. We're living on an island. We can't get on. We can't get off. So uh, that's the way it is at the moment. <laughs> Vicky, how are you? And Monica, great to see you, Monica. Hey, Monica, I loved your onion tart. I was a little surprised that you hadn't put some Swiss cheese in there mixed in with those onions. I was just getting, I was hoping when I was reading your recipe there was going to be some Swiss cheese in there. I'm going to make it, but I'm going to add a, uh, either some Emmental or some Gruyere or something like that into that onion mix. It looks so good. I am going to make that onion tart maybe next week. It, I was blown up. I'm kind of going tart crazy at the moment. I made a lemon tart. I made a chocolate tart. I made a, a spinach feta and uh, what tomato tart. Oh, that was divine, by the way. It was really, really divine. I made that in my little oven, and it turned out absolutely superb. Absolutely. In fact, I thought it turned out better than if I cooked it in my gas oven. So anyway, there you go. Oh, you use dry herbs, Darlene, I know. Well, listen, uh, you can have little tiny herb garden, gardens, you know. You can get a little bay tree. You can get a little rosemary bush. And you can cook, have these all in pots. You don't have to have them growing in your garden. You can have a little pot of um, thyme. And uh, these things are great. And if you're in a warmer climate, you can have things like uh, cilantro growing outside. Parsley grows great in the ground. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so you get an abundance of that. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Robin. Yes, well, I just got that finished. I just finished it about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So it's doing very well. And there's 50 different soups in there with fully illustrated photographs and everything. So it's really nice. It is an ebook, but it it downloads to your to your computer or you can print it out whatever you like but listen girls thanks for joining me today i really really appreciate it and i hope that you have a wonderful day and if you see someone without a smile give them yours see you soon okay it's going to be soup making next week <laughs> get your big pots out good time to buy a big soup pot they're all on sale in the shops at the moment Okay, and Glenda, you can get yourself a new wooden spoon. <laughs> See you later, girls. Bye. Lots of love. Bye.